You've always been a big supporter of uh, kind of what Something Feels Wrong is all about, bringing people oh, here seamlessly time. and big helping time. them avoid some of the, what we call simple mistakes, but for them, if you don't know, they're mistakes people often make, right? You know, the simple mistakes to me could be quite traumatizing for people, the newcomers. Uh, I remember on one of Barry's segments, he mentioned that if you think, let's just say you're Canadian, you come here and you think Canadian way, it might not work. You have to not only climatize, but you have to recondition your way of thinking, the way things are operated here. For example, when you're driving, Yes, you follow the lines, you, f you, you respect the double lines, but what happens when the guy next to you doesn't do that? And you're going to what? You're going to complain that, hey, I did all the right things. Why did he hit me? There's a lot of imprudence sometimes because of lack of police vigilance, maybe, or just lack of common sense. And you have to be double prepared to make sure your safety. And others, of course, it goes hand in hand. You know, when you come to these countries, and I say these countries because I'm not, um, maybe might not, might, might not be the right thing to say, but when I say these countries, it's because we don't have uh, the protection that we thought we had. We're, we're kind of spoiled back home. When it comes to Canada, we're spoiled. Of course, uh, it's gotten out of control. There's so much police vigilance now yeah. that you're afraid to make a move. And here it's the complete 180. Now, does a guy like you look at that more like personal freedom? You're not as scared of nothing. I, I know that just because no. we're friends. Wait a second. I don't look at that as freedom because you're only free when you feel free. Freedom, what happens when somebody violates your, your well-being? then you don't feel free anymore. And this is what might happen when a typical Joe happens to turn the wrong side of the street and you happen to be there rightfully and he smashes your front headlight. Now you gotta explain this to the cops and it gets complicated. So you want to avoid complications by understanding how people think, how people react. So you react accordingly. Yes, the law says but not everybody follows that. So it's a little deep, you know, but you must be aware. You're driving in the street, you see somebody waving a red handkerchief, that means either danger or animal crossing. You're not used to seeing it back home, but that's what it means over here. So you better know about that, you know. I think that we, and when I say we, the foreigners who live here, people who have websites, people who are very involved in informing people, should be a little bit more broad-minded towards that and as soon as visitors come to a town there has to be something someone or somehow a way of explaining to them that certain things must be respected for your own well-being your security very simple but you know you have to inform yourself also you cannot go blindly into any place any country any town and think that what you're doing is right because you might be totally wrong what made a guy like you and your wife uh, that that has, like I say, uh, all kidding aside, a lot of hands-on experience that determined and that developed, rather, excuse me, into wisdom. What made you choose Caprera of all the other places you know? Well, I am not a big traveler. I didn't travel much in my life. Ironically, I live in a tropical country today. I haven't taken many vacations. I worked all my life. So when I came here, it was because a relative of mine brought here. I had a near-death accident in Montreal. And after my therapy, my physical therapy was over, I came here. We're still working on the mental part, guys. But <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, let's not get into that. There's, there's not enough footage for that. <laughs> anyway, uh, when I got here, I left. When I came out of the airport, I got that gush of humidity, and I said, I'm staying. As ridiculous you as it sounds. It. Yes. I, and it was at night. We arrived. It was 10.30 at night. Yeah, yeah. And for the first time, I, I wasn't a blackout. I didn't know what a blackout was. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I walk out of the airport, and there's just lights there. As soon as you go to the parking lot, everything is black everywhere. So because of the electrical inconsistencies, 
I had my, I walked right into my first blackout. So we did about an hour and a half of auto route all the way to Rio San Juan, which is about 15 minutes away from here. And my uncle had an apartment there. So we got up, we went up the stairs, put our luggages down. I couldn't see anything. And uh, the person who was driving us, who lived in Rio San Juan, a Dominican, very good friend of ours, he goes, okay, we're going to go see my brother. He lives in Cabrera. Mm. I had just got here. It was my first night. My first night. And right in front of my house, this was the first house built in this neighborhood. And at the time, uh, my one of my first friends, Marco Fermin, who was senator of Nagua in the early 1900s, uh, Sorry, in the early 1990s, he had his first house there. And I, my, they brought me, he was sitting in this gazebo. And uh, for the very little bit of light there was around me, I, I was just fascinated. And uh, for some strange reason, I told my uncle, then and there, I'm building my home in Cabrera. Hmm. And here I am, 23 years later. Have you regretted it? Not at all. Not at all. You will catch me when you get to know me, if you get to know me, then I complain a lot. <laughs> Barry nails me all the time. My friends make jokes about Beer's me. Beer's too warm. The daiquiri's too fruitful. Oh, yeah. It's, it, oh, it, yeah. No, no, it's... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, basically, uh, you can't help sometimes by talking about pet peeves, you know? Yeah. You can't help it. It's, all, it's in our nature, but it, it does not overshadow the fact that this is a town that I will not give up easily. I'm sorry, I, I'm like that. Can you see yourself uh, settling here for the balance of your days? I think I told my wife I'm going to be s settling my bones here. Yeah. Is that enough? A lot <laughs> of people feel that way. There's, it's hard to really, if I asked you what's special about it, it's hard to say. Okay, but first, I can never answer that question because the tropics is not for everybody. Yeah, no places. You might come here and you might discover something. It might be a friend. A group of people, food, a certain building you like to be, a certain beach you like to be, and you say, I want to come here every year. I want to spend two, two months of the year over here. And then there are other people that will come here and say, I'm never going back home again. And of course, I've also had my share of people say, I'm never coming back. I need hot water. I need this. I need that. Because we are too pampered, spoiled back home. And... I understand that, you know. But around us, our Dominican hosts and great friends we have here, I mean, life goes on. There were times where I used to take a shower the old-fashioned way. Yeah, we did too. Put a bucket, you know, and, and I loved it, you know. Yeah. But now things have really progressed in that way. Things have progressed because when you start to see the grass on the other side, you want to be part of it. Mm -hmm. Same thing with us. We came from the other side and we like it here. But we know both sides. We have our Dominican friends who have seen how we live back home too. So they come back with broader ideas. It's great. But now things have changed. Yes, of course things have changed. As soon as people could afford it, you have solar panels, uh, what do you call them, turbines. Mm -hmm. You know, things have gotten better. It's a slow moving wheel, but yeah. it's moving. Yeah, yeah. It's moving. Do you see opportunity in this little town in the future? There's been opportunity here forever. And people are still coming and Cabrera is growing. So I have to say yes. But if I go into details, we're going to get old here. There well, maybe, is definitely opportunity here. I'm going to maybe reserve you for another time. I'll, Anytime. It's going to cost a dinner, but it's worth it. Yeah, it's okay. What can you tell people that are kind of looking, and I don't mean just in, uh, in uh, the Dominican Republic, Mo, but looking for uh, a change in life or a better quality or where your dollar goes a little further. We were just talking before camera about uh, different ideas I had uh, versus Mo in regards to the peso and the dollar, and, and uh, we're going to maybe even do a video on that one day, but what can you tell folks about who have who are just I guess I use I call them fence post sitters that are afraid because they they look at internet too much and they they just get uh, to take it to take a, a just a, a discovery trip a discovery tour mind well you. The, the afraid part is natural I was afraid when I came here I was 35 years old so basically people were telling me oh no you cannot change your dollars in pesos it's always devaluating of course yes I understand that but I'm a businessman 
and I needed pesos to move. I can't move around with dollars every time. Somebody comes to me with pesos, I gotta change pesos. I'm pro-commerce. I had to use that money, although it was devaluating. But I made it work for me. Because if you're earning money, and you know the pesos devaluating, you got pesos, if you don't need them, change them back to dollars. There are venues for that, you know. The banks over here, with the, the new laws, the new restrictions, are pretty safe. If I've been here for 23 years and nothing's happened, why should it happen now? Oh, if, my God, yeah, they're holding uh, upwards it, of 16% uh, cash reserve. You know, that's, that's very, 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 very healthy. So, right, I mean, uh, technically you're a lot more informed than I am, but I'm trying to speak at a, perhaps, at a lower level for people who don't really follow economy or the growth of money or the decline of money. Uh, it's safe in the sense that if you are on top of your own game, whatever level it is, you can't go wrong. You are in control of what you do. They don't tell you what to do. You tell them what to do. Do you, as a three-decade almost resident, citizen, whatever, do you feel pretty much government and big brother and police, uh, they pretty much leave you alone unless you're a troublemaker. You can pretty much... There's two versions to that. I don't get much trouble from anybody. I don't see people going after you unless you are in bad circles. Mm -hmm. It's the bad circles that will get you the wrong attention. For example, you're, you like going out at night. You like hanging around with some shady people. So that means you'll be sharing drinks with people that don't really care about your well-being. They're just there to maybe get some information from you. To, to, they're sort of sizing you out. Who are you, you know? So after a few drinks, you start saying things you shouldn't be saying. So now that will attract the wrong attention because you're giving maybe personal information to the wrong ears. And sooner or later, you'll have someone visiting you and, how can I put it, molesting your, <laughs> your, your tranquil moments, you know? I mean, uh, yes, if you're in bad circles, you're going to get problems. But the people over here don't hassle, don't bother you. Would you think that's a, a uniform statement about hanging around bad circles and any nation is going to get you in trouble? Anywhere you go in this world, bad circles being great, always brought big problems. There's no escape. You wake up in the morning, you have a 9 to 5 job, you work, you value your dollar. People don't wake up to go to work in the morning, they're doing illicit things. Next thing you know, when things go bad, they're looking for someone to piggyback to feed their habits. I'm going to ask you one closing question, and I'm going to respect your time on this. Uh, closing question is, can I guarantee another visit with you someday to answer a few more questions? Because honestly, the, the, the wisdom is there from experience. You've made mistakes. You've headed up that chapter in life. Don't let this happen to you. And... Uh, I would love to have another presentation or another run at this, talk about other issues. There are many things to talk about. Of course, uh, some. Uh, the, I'm, my concern is the newcomers. My, why my concern? Because every step they take could be the wrong one, and that brings bad information out, which we don't need, which we don't deserve. You've got to do things rightfully. You've got to talk to the right people. Take your time. Come here. Enjoy it. Inform yourself with the right people. And believe me, instincts will let you know who the right people are. Select what you have to say and keep it minimal. Keep it minimal and simple so you get a more rounded out, full-figured information in return. Don't get too intricate because then someone's going to lose control somewhere and you might, you're not going to get what you want. But keep things simple and talk to the right people. How do you talk to the right people? Look at the way they live. Very simple. It's like your, your parents always told you, hang around with the better friends. Same thing here. Nothing's changed in decades. Anything? Well, with that in mind, though, I want to thank you for your time. and uh, I'm glad we can do this again at a later date and get a little bit more deeper. And uh, I really appreciate you doing this for us. My pleasure. One more thing. 
and I, I got witnesses over here. <laughs> this dinner, is it on your nickel or it's, mine? No, it's my nickel. There you go, guys. That's my all nickel. I wanted to hear. Lobster's out. Forget there, about nickel. it. Forget about okay. it. Man. Everything's cool. I'm not into lobster, but I'll go for it. <laughs> Thank you very much. Hey, guys, if you do come to Cabrera, please look us up. We'd, be love, we'd love to have some time with you, man. Thank you very much. Now you know why. I, uh, I think I've selected some great people <laughs> as friends. My circle is small, but it is complete. Until next time, this is Barry and DR. We'll talk to you soon. Bye.